Welcome to Gold Talks. On these little clips, we're going to meet some very interesting people that are going to connect sports, football particularly, and mental health and wellness. I hope you enjoy. Joseph, thank you for being with us today on Gold Talks. Uh, we're very excited about this um, new segment. We are going to be talking with everybody that is on the First Half podcast and getting a little deeper around the subject of football and how we believe it can change the world because it can. Um, so you're our actual inaugural uh, person for this. And so thank you for being here with us. Uh, and so we're going to dive right in because it's a short and sweet sort of concept. Um, can football be the sport that leads in change in community and society? Can it be that catalyst and can it be up at the forefront? Absolutely, yeah. Um, purely because of the sheer numbers that follow it around the world. You know, it's, it's very much not, not necessarily a leading sport in every country, but you look at the amount of numbers that follow it worldwide, it's definitely got it's a massive vehicle for change. Absolutely. Can um, the sport itself uh, look to itself to say we have to be uh, the sport that takes that lead? Being that football is, again, in I guess in our opinion and in my opinion for sure, the game of the world. Um, I know that numbers, you know, from there's other sports like cricket. There, there are other sort of large sports that the world plays in rugby, but let's be honest, it is really the world's game, football. Does it have an obligation to make those changes? And what I mean by that is if they have social commentary to make, like what we're seeing right now uh, with racism and, um, and you know, cultural messaging, do they have sort of no choice but to take that lead and to say, well, too bad. I mean, you know, if we're in the front of everybody's eyes, we have to make commentary. We have to try and, you know, push change through uh, the system. Yeah, absolutely. I think they do. Um, if, if you look at the sort of bit, of the, you know, the crowd within a stadium, that's a microcosm of society in itself, right? You get the, the best and worst of it. So you've got a, an audience there just open to the message that the, the game can put out to them. Um, so they have to put, so the game has to put out a positive message, absolutely. If you, I mean, this might be going off on a tangent, but back in the, the day that the, the National Front in the UK would use the terraces as a recruitment ground to, to get young disenfranchised guys on their side and it becomes political, even though people don't like the two mixing, they, they very much do, it's unavoidable. So yeah, absolutely, the, the sport, the powers that be and the players should absolutely use their position to try and affect change where possible because there are so many eyes on them yeah because of, exactly yeah they they i mean no one gets into the game to to become a social activist they want to be a footballer but it's um once you get to that level where you've got a platform you you absolutely should use it yeah and that's what i was going to say you're absolutely right you don't get into a lot of things thinking that you're going to make uh you know, social messaging your thing in the front and that it's something that you have to do. But I think when you become, uh, if you're in the front of community in any sort of fashion, I think today we understand that the importance of actually speaking your mind, listening to others and figuring out what you might be thinking uh, might be wrong, or it's not that it's wrong, but that you have to look at it from another angle. Again, you know, these are these are very important things that I think the most recent times have shown us that there's just you can't just keep sweeping things under the rug. And and and, and I know today we're discussing a Black Lives Matter uh, scenario, um, but this is there are these issues for all sorts of communities and all sorts of cultural backgrounds. And just in general, the idea of not dealing with things um, and sort of just a little bit of conversation, then move on to the next thing. And I'm not getting into media now about cycles and all of that. That's not what I mean. I just mean to say that we have to deal with our issues and, Using football as that opportunity, I think there's no discussion. I think if you, you know, you're not doing that, I think you're doing something wrong. That, that that's how I really do see it. I would agree. Yeah. Uh, 
how do you feel sport and football in general, or just sport helps with mental health, um, helps with issues of anxiety and stress. And, you know, I mean, how does it help people sort of take on their day? It's definitely an outlet, isn't it? I think um, whether you're playing it or just watching it, having something, something else to focus on just for 90 minutes can be a real kind of saviour in your week, you know? Um, you take away any kind of pleasure and satisfaction and it will have a negative effect on you. Um, and there's, yeah, countless charities. That I'm sure you've got the same over there in, in terms of mental health charities and that are attached to football clubs and all sports. But, um, I mean, do you mean how it can help in ter- in, on a professional level in, in the aid that it gives or just on a holistic level? Holistic. On a holistic level. Oh, yeah, in that case, just I think the release for, for a spectator, it's just that, um, just switching off from your your life for 90 minutes and just putting all of your eggs in the basket of 11 players that you've just decided to follow. Yeah. Uh, just using a mate of mine as an example, another Will who works on the magazine, the different ones that the, the one I mentioned earlier on, good mate of mine, we've known each other for 15 years. Um, his dad died a few years ago on a Thursday evening, um, spent the next couple of days in a trance. We, we had Newcastle at home on the Saturday. And he was so relieved to just get there, to get to that ground and just, and it was a turgid game. It was useless, but he was just so happy to just not have to think about anything, anything else that he had to do at home. It was just, you know, I can just come here and watch this game of football, have a beer with my mate and just be me again for an hour and a half before going back into, into the madness that comes with that kind of situation. So yeah, absolutely. It's a pressure valve, right? It just, it's a great way for people to let off steam preferably responsibly. Um, definitely having that out will save a lot of lives. Yeah, and, and, and clear the mind of, of something for a little bit. And then when you're ready to retackle some of the issues that you have in your everyday life, you, it, again, having a few breaths before yeah. you deal with the next thing in front of you just gives you a better chance of solving that issue, right? Exactly, yeah, just suspend reality, just for a little bit, right? Yeah, just, yeah it can't hurt. <laughs> Joseph, thanks for being on Gold Talks. This was uh, great. Thank you for breaking the ice with us. And again, uh, you know, be well. And uh, we look forward to being in touch again soon. Thanks. Good stuff, mate. Cheers. Speak soon.